the Hornet. An economy compact by American Motors. The Duster. An economy compact by Plymouth. Duster and Hornet. The difference in appearance is obvious. And there are other big differences you should know about. When you compare the two cars, the basic Hornet just doesn't make it. You have to start with a Hornet SST even to get in the same class with Duster. Even then, you soon discover that the SST doesn't come up to Duster quality. A quality difference really shows up in front bumpers. Duster's bumper is over two and a half inches deeper for better protection. That goes for rear bumpers too. A big styling difference is apparent in these front doors. No window frame for Duster looks like a hardtop, while Hornet's window is framed like a sedan. Duster's sloping rear roof and deck styling give it a sports roof look. Hornet's rear styling is more abrupt. Duster's extra length, nine inches longer than Hornet, extends gracefully to the rear. Duster's standard 695 by 14 tires are wider and look better than Hornet's 645 tires. They give extra traction, too. Extra quality really shows in Duster's rich wood grain vinyl instrument cluster trim. It completely outclasses the metallic trim on the Hornet SST. What's more, this precision alternator gauge and a parking brake warning light are standard on Duster. You can't get an alternator gauge on Hornet SST, just a warning light. And the parking brake light is extra cost. Cutting corners like this to keep Hornet's price low can be costly to car owners, like driving off with the parking brake on and damaging the rear brakes just for lack of a warning light. It looks like there's more quality in Duster's front door armrests and safety action handles too. Yes, and it shows. Hornet's armrests are rather flimsy and they're poorly attached. They deflect when you put any weight on them. Look how Hornet skims on sun visors. Too short to keep out the sun at the center and no clips to keep them from vibrating. Duster's sun visors have extensions around the mirror and the rich vinyl headlining is offered in five different colors. Blue, green, red, tan, and black. It's color keyed to the interior. Hornet's fiberglass headlining comes only in white, and it really shows fingerprints and scuff marks. Besides, it doesn't look much better than a raw insulation pad. Both Duster and Hornet SST have flip-out rear quarter windows for no draft ventilation in the rear compartment. But again, Hornet skimps on the hardware. The window lever is so small you practically have to pry open the latch with your fingers to open the window. Duster's window lever has a handle for flipping the window open. Buy a basic Hornet and you get this fixed rear window. It doesn't flip out, doesn't roll down. No ventilation for rear passengers. How's that for economy? Here's what it looks like getting into a basic Hornet at night. No automatic door switches to turn the dome light on. It stumble and fumble before you get the key in the ignition. Just another way to keep the car price below 2000 Unlatch Hornet's glove box and the door pops open on your knuckles. Not very good planning. You'll find Duster's door locks easier to reach than Hornet's because they're located forward on the doors. Right, and Duster's doors have two position door checks that hold them halfway open so the door doesn't close on you in a tight space. You won't find them on any Hornet. Duster's big advantage in hip room over Hornet makes it more comfortable for three passengers. They're not squeezed together like they are in Hornet. That's because Duster has 2.3 inches more hip room in the front seat and over three and a half inches more hip room in the rear than Hornet. Duster has more shoulder room in both seats too. Duster's 25% larger trunk capacity is obvious in these pictures and the spare below the floor makes Duster's trunk even more usable. And look at the difference in trunk lengths. Hornet's short deck styling leaves the trunk short on length. And Hornet's shortcomings go on, like vacuum windshield wipers, even on the SST. 
Haven't seen them around for years on any car. Hornet offers the more reliable electric wipers, but charges you extra. And look at the cheap plastic bag Hornet uses for windshield washer fluid. We thought everyone had gone to the sturdy plastic bottle like you see in Duster. It's easier to fill, holds more, and is easier to check for fluid level. Here's a hidden Hornet economy. No heated inlet air system for six-cylinder engines. Duster has the heated air system on both sixes and the standard V8. Hornet gets it on the V8 only. The heated inlet air system lets you drive with leaner fuel air mixtures in cool weather. This reduces exhaust emissions and virtually eliminates carburetor icing and the engine stalling it causes. Both Duster and Hornet offer economy sixes for the buyer who wants to get maximum gas mileage. Duster's has 125 horsepower, Hornet's 128. But the Hornet SST buyer can't get this engine. He has to take a larger 145 horsepower six, and that can't be as economical. Duster also offers a 145 horsepower six for the buyer who wants the extra performance. Hornet offers an optional 155 horsepower two barrel carburetor six, but it will cost you $259.55 extra. Why? Because it's available only with the automatic transmission. A big price for 10 extra horsepower. In standard V8s, Duster outpowers Hornet by 20 horsepower. And what's more? The lowest priced Hornet V8 you can buy will cost you $177.95 more than the lowest priced Duster V8. Again, it's because you have to take the automatic transmission with any Hornet V8. And the manual transmission in that low-priced Duster V8 is synchronized in first gear as well as second and high, something you can't get on any Hornet. In pricing standard sixes, you'll notice that Hornet SST does have a $28 price advantage over Duster, but that's not much when you consider the big differences in cars. In this December 1969 issue, Road and Track magazine has this to say about Hornet. By any standards, even of the average American car, the Hornet's handling comes off poorly in comparison. We rated Hornet's brakes as poor, the only car we've tested in 1969 to get that overall rating. We keep saying that an inexpensive car doesn't have to be bad, and that what the manufacturer ought to do is start out with a good concept, engineer it with skill, style it with taste, and build it with care. And when you do that, you come up with a duster. So you can see why the basic Hornet, a real plain Jane with austere features and marginal construction, a car that nobody could really be proud of, can be advertised for 1994. But as the lady says, is that all there is to a car? Duster says there's more, a lot more. Duster says the owner wants to be proud of a car, even if it doesn't have any options. Duster says that styling and quality are important, that comfort and convenience, ride and handling, are all important to every buyer, even the price buyer. Now, let's turn to the ambassador, American Motors' biggest car. The Ambassador DPL is in the same price class with Fury 3. Fact is, in four-door sedans, the DPL V8, which comes with air conditioning standard, lists for $49 more than a Fury 3 V8 equipped with air. And if you take the Ambassador with the delete option on air, it costs $218 more than the standard Fury 3 V8. In size, the lower-priced Fury 3 is 2.4 inches wider and has a 2-inch wider track front and rear for better stability. Fury is also nearly 7 inches longer. Ambassador does have a 2-inch longer wheelbase. For inside roominess, the Automotive News Roominess Index makes it very plain. Fury is at the top of the standard size class. Ambassador is at the bottom. And the lower-priced and bigger Fury V8 has more horsepower 
more effective brake lining, and a bigger capacity gasoline tank than Ambassador. What's more, Fury gets reliable electric wipers. Ambassador gets old-fashioned vacuum. Fury has a 36,000 mile lube interval. Ambassador, 24,000. That's why when it comes to price, size, performance, brakes, and features, Fury makes it big over Ambassador.